The distribution of rainfall in China not only marks the differences between East and West, between the native Han Chinese people who dominate southeastern China and their agrarian economy, uh, but also defines the basic issues between North and South. Again, let's return to our rainfall map, which shows that the bulk of the rainfall is in the South. And this is in contrast to the agricultural map, which shows that most agricultural cultivation is in the North. In fact, as this graph indicates, the maldistribution of water and uh, farmland is quite striking. In this case, South China has over 80% of all of the fresh water and less than 40% of the farmland, whereas North China has only a 18% of the fresh water and nearly uh, over 60% of the farmland. As a consequence, the problems of water distribution are different in North and South. For South China, the main threat is flooding, as illustrated here. Flooding occurs primarily because at the very time that the heavy rains, monsoon rains, are introduced to South China, beginning in the spring, the melting of the glaciers and runoff of water from the Tibetan Plateau also reaches its peak. And when a very heavy monsoon system coincides with a heavy runoff from the glaciers, it, there occurs severe flooding on the lower Yangtze. Here is a map that shows the course of the Yangtze River from its origins in the Tibetan Plateau to the west, down through central China, finally exiting into the Pacific Ocean near Shanghai. In many years, the Tibetan uh, runoffs bring excessive waters into the lower Yangtze, causing very serious flooding, which has occurred repeatedly throughout Chinese history and even down into recent years. To address this problem of excessive water flows and flooding into the lower Yangtze, beginning in 1994, the Chinese erected a major dam on the Yangtze River at the Three Gorges, which is located in central China, as indicated here. This map shows the location of the Three Gorges in central China on the Yangtze River between the highlands in the west and the floodplain in the east. The Three Gorges provide a, an ideal location for the creation of a large hydroelectric dam, which the Chinese began to build in 1994 and completed 14 years later in 2008. This is one of the largest construction projects in China, rivaling the Great Wall and the Grand Canal. It, now, it is now used to produce hydroelectric energy, to control navigation, allow ships to, to come from the Pacific Ocean and to be raised by locks and to uh, continue up to Chongqing in, in, in western China. And most importantly, it creates a huge reservoir that allows the Chinese to control the flow of water, damming it up, and holding the water in the reservoir when floods threaten the lower Yangtze and releasing the water as required for irrigation downstream. The project, as I said, took 14 years to complete at a cost of $27 billion and the relocation of over a million people and the flooding of many archaeological treasures. It has also caused disruption of ecology and possibly the incidence of earthquakes. It remains a highly controversial but major project for the control of water in the 
water surplus region downstream. The situation in North China is the opposite. In North China, the problem is drought and the threat is the overuse of fresh water uh, leaves little, little availability for the irrigation of the North China Plain. In fact, the Yellow River, the major source of water and of irrigation in North China, has run dry 30 out of the last 40 years, leaving North China with little water to deal with such incidents as the great drought of 2011, one of the most serious droughts in Chinese history, which, by the way, occurred just at the time of the Tahrir demonstrations in Egypt, and many observers have opined that it was the Chinese drought that cut agricultural production and drove up world grain prices that may have affected the uh, inhabitants of Cairo and their willingness to take to the streets in protest against their government. So it's a, it's a curious coincidence of events that shows the interrelationship between climatic events and world prices, and therefore politics. Now, if they could dam the, the river in the south, how are they going to deal with the uh, shortage of water in the north? Well, in similar fashion, the Chinese have undertaken a major engineering and construction project, which is known by the Chinese name the South to North Water Transfer Project. As illustrated in this map, it involves three different methods of bringing water from the water surplus Yangtze system in the south to the water short Yellow River system in the north. The most important of these initiatives uh, is, will be completed in 2014. It is the central branch which will bring water from a reservoir on one of the tributaries to the Yangtze, uh, first pumping it and then allowing it to flow by gravity into the Beijing area, as, in, as illustrated in this map. The second part of the project, which is to revive the old Grand Canal and pump water from the lower Yangtze north, is under construction. The third part of this initiative which is to channel water from the upper reaches of the Yangtze, Yangtze to the upper reaches of the Yellow River uh, on the Tibetan Plateau is much more complicated and still under investigation. As these slides illustrate, the maldistribution of water between a water surplus south and a land agricultural uh, emphasis in the north has upset the balance between water and agriculture and prompted the Chinese to undertake major construction projects to control the surplus of water in the south and to provide additional water to the north. This will remain one of the big issues in Chinese uh, politics and economics now and in the future.